Spot News Media. We got the latest news. We don't care about the views. We just represent and write. Put local news internationally every night on the spot. Wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right. Y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a go on. A blessed and wonderful Monday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So now the morning, as always, I have a few stories for share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going on in Jamaica. So as always, my peeps, the knockings and clappings always turn up over the weekends. Boy, I tell you, my peeps, the old dirty criminal elements them continue to wreak havoc in our dearly beloved island home, Jamaica. So before me get into the knockings and clappings, my peeps, I want to pass you a minute and look on the screen. This is one aspect of the cost of crime. And we, the regular members of Chan Public, we bear the blunt of all of them tax money that them have to pump into the healthcare system for knockings and clappings victims. So this on your screen is an EU-funded study that revealed that hospitals spend over $400,000 per day to keep one can up can victim in intensive care. The cost of crime could be as high as 633 million United States dollars or 85 billion Jamaican dollars. When put into perspective of the country's 2019 GDP, that is the gross domestic product. So violence related injuries is the third leading cause of premature loss of life in Jamaica. So the cost of crime is really staggering, as you can see on the screen. But anyway, my peeps, make we continue. So over there in the troubled, crime-riddled police division of the Kingston Western, boy, may I tell you, they never give it a wrong name when time them add Western to the end of that name, Kingston Western, because a cowboy business ever go on over there, some man. Low knockings and clappings every day. So on your screen is a man known as Kemar Angus. Yeah, man, a real famous criminal figure in the Kingston Western Police Division. This brother is definitely under the police radar for quite some time as he is also the brother of reputed gang leader Karen Angus, otherwise known as Kadula or Dula from the general top jungle area. So from your ear, say Adula, brother, you definitely know so he's a little knackis and clappis, just the same. Well, Saturday night, them the around uh, the intersection right there, so a Benbow Street, a Radney Street, a party, and don't know have a jolly good time. Enjoying themselves, uh, drinking the spirits, and in high spirits, of course. Then, uh, guess who was on duty in the area at the time of peeps? Officer Yeman Ho. Yeah, man, may I tell you. So, Officer Yeman Pick got word that an illegal party was being held in the vicinity of Benbow and Radney Street. So Officer Yeman Pick and team went around there to turn off the loud noise because he was sent there from a police control. I get to understand. So upon the approach of Officer Yeman Pick and team, Kemar Angus was seen behaving in a suspicious manner. Then all of a sudden, the man wheel and pop off in chops and clap two can in the direction of Officer Yeman Pick and team. But little did he know that Officer Yeman Pick is definitely a well-trained officer, trained at the agriculture school in Portland, where he learned to plant corn in a dirty boy tomok, and that he did spread out Kemar like a sheet, no longer among the land of the living. 
So one more definitely never heed to the warning and lose him life to the carning. The police also stated that they recovered a firearm from him, of course, because he pointed and fired in their direction and in defense of their life. They definitely fired back. It was also stated in the police report that the brother of the now deceased, Kemar, who is known as Keran Angus, otherwise known as Kadula, has sent out threats to the security forces promising reprisal. So the country's national security force, boy, I tell you, come on, criminal, I send them threat. See, alone knockings and clappings anywhere them book in the street. So, my peeps, living in and around the general top jungle of Benbow Street area, brace on yourself because the knockings and clappings definitely will continue. But anyway, my peeps, make we move on. So over there in the troubled, crime-riddled police division of St. Andrew South, we are going to visit the community of Cockburn Pen, where you definitely know it is a war-torn community, paying particular attention to Willow Drive. Now on the screen is a cookout that was supposed to be held on the 15th of October, so you know it's a Saturday that we're gone. And as you can also see on the screen, it's Dan's cookout. Now who is Dan? Dan is this brother here presently on your screen right now. So the cookout was held on his birthday, which is October 15th. Well, Dan end up get slapped with. Yeah, man, the man them send him gone to shut eye country land quick and fast, push and tack on to him skin right pan him acres. So many people I wonder what could I really go on make them slap with Dan right pan fit him acres. Who could have so bright and out of order if he come clap with the general pan him acres. Well, let me give you know, the full story pan what really I go on with that. Now, Dan is just not an ordinary youth in the streets. Dan is the younger brother of the reputed gang leader for the Cockburn Pen Gang with them call Waldi. So on the know say Waldi, whose birth name is Valbert Harley, was the reputed gang leader for Cockburn Pen. Here yeah, man, the head cook and buckle washer for around this. Uh, the head corner boy. Here yeah, man, may I tell you, dangerous youth back in them days, who lost his life also under what is called a controversial circumstance. Because one side of the fence, I say a criminal elements touch him whilst coming from court. And the other side of the fence, I say I the squad of them dress up and I pretend to be criminal elements and touch him. Here yeah, man, may I tell you. So watch this now, my peeps. Now, after the passing of his older brother, Waldi, I don't know so Waldi was a powerhouse financially and also in the criminal underworld. Waldi is a man who have connections all about, four kind of connections, them call it. This brother is linked with just about every single community, every single garrison all about in Jamaica. And there is no two ways about that. That is a proven fact that he was pretty much like what Christopher Dodos Cook is in the Tivoli Gardens realm. So, Waldi was definitely something of the sort like that. So, this brother here definitely had the connections. So, upon his passing, you know, all of Waldi's possessions was basically inherited by the younger brother. We are talking about apartment complexes. We are talking about luxury apartments. We also are talking about luxury vehicles. All of the amenities that comes with a criminal mobster. Yeah, man, and that is what Waldi was. But the difference is with his younger brother, him not really swear allegiance to what Waldi would have established him go against everything that Waldi would have established so Waldi's friends and connections was not his friends or connections either him definitely a try for a bill for him own criminal empire because Dan himself you know was definitely no saint whatsoever 
because whilst his brother was alive and used to reign supreme over Cockburn Pen and other communities, him Dan was a serial knackis and clappis, as you say, who the boy head lick out, spread out like sheet. Ghana shut our country and no longer among the land of the living at them type of criminal lifestyle there him used to live. But him definitely branch off and decide say boy him a go do for him own thing since the passing of him brother and decide say by the hook or by the crook him a go farm for him own criminal empire and get the same street credibility that his brother had. But the streets would definitely not have that because the streets already know say him a living at the shadow of Waldi and all so I live off the legacies of Waldi. But him definitely decides say him a go make fit him name independently. So him cut off certain people who was the connections and certain people who swore allegiance to his brother whilst his brother was reigning supreme. So Dan went ahead and recruit some little young youth round him where a perform a whole heap of high-end robberies all over the corporate area and also sections of rural Jamaica. So him start make fame own connections, them now fame own links and start links with some and brother old enemies, which was his enemies. It seemed as if him forget what them used to go on with back in them days there. Because you know the crime world, you know, a man not forget certain things, you know. A man might live down a thing for a minute, but him now go forget it so him start link with some a while the old time enemies which was fit him enemies because as a knackis and clappis under his brother's reign him also gained a lot of enemies whilst they were reigning supreme over the general Cockburn pen area so basically the brother get touched and a whole heap of people and make all different type of speculations where that is concerned. A whole heap of fingers are pointing in all different directions but nobody is for sure who really touch him because of his relentless efforts to try to get the same street credibility that his brother had. Him definitely start link with some people where him should not link with. And it is said that one of his longtime enemies got word of the cookout and sent two man brazen beer face. See a man come clap him away. So basically is a friend turn enemies type of situation because that old enemy became his friend but the enemy never forget what really take place and send two man come near him food and broke the plate. Yeah man may I tell you out there in the bad man world I tell you my peeps it's a world on a need to stay from because it's a doggy dog type of situation. Yeah man so anyway make we continue. So in yesterday morning's blog, I made mention of a 22-year-old Jamaican woman that was fatally taken out in Nassau, Bahamas last Friday by criminal elements in that era. Now her family members and mother came out to say that they believe that her passing is linked to a gang feud. Now the victim on your screen, Tadasha Morgan Sears. Yesterday I made mention that her name was Brittany Morgan. Now Brittany was said to be her pet name, but her birth name is Tadasha Morgan. Tadasha lost her life after being conned up at her home in Redland Acres in Nassau. Her mother, Natania Green, stated that she was at home when the knockings and clappings occurred. Miss Green noted that her daughter was the latest casualty of a gang feud involving men from nearby communities. She stated that her daughter was not a part of any criminal gang. Her daughter was innocently sitting on her couch on her tablet when she was struck by that fatal can. Yeah man, boy, I may tell you, the situation really sad. But the mother stated that she knows for sure that her daughter's incident was indeed gang related. Miss Green also stated that the Bahamas police have been offering much needed support. They have been very, very supportive, she stated, and that they are aggressively searching for the perpetrators of the crime to bring them to justice. Some of peeps, definitely a sad situation right there. So remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.